everything is quiet. Is anybody there? Everything is hidden. The spirit of the forest walk in silence in the night. In the morning, with the first sunlight, you see magnificent cacti everywhere. If you look closer to the ground, you see little tracks, then larger ones, those of jaguars, pumas, armadillos, and other species that I still have to learn how to recognize from their tracks. There is also the magic of working, of, of sharing this land with indigenous people, the Warami, the Warani people, who call this land their home. Kneeling down beside a Warani hunter at three o'clock in the morning on a patch of sand during a nocturnal hunting for armadillo, listening to him reverently invoking Ka Ija, the spirit of the forest, asking permission to take from the forest once again. This is the Gran Chaco, the largest tropical dry forest in the world, comprising one million, square kilo, one million square kilometers between four countries in South America, Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, and Paraguay. Tropical dry forests are relatively open woodlands which are found in tropical areas. They have a long dry season followed by a short period of heavy rainfall. The landscapes are really diverse. It can be very dry, with the beige-colored grass on sand dunes blowing in the wind. It can be beautiful oasis in the middle of a vast plain. It can be hills, huge rivers that are swollen in the rainy season and completely dry the rest of the time, bringing life to this biome. The animals are as diverse as the landscapes. There are giant armadillos weighing 30 kilos and little armadillos weighing only 200 grams. There are several endemic species which are only found in the Gran Chaco. When you hear the definition dry forest, you may imagine no life. But the Gran Chaco has one of the healthiest population of jaguars on the continent. There are 500 species of birds, 100 species of reptiles, similar for amphibians, and counting. People are part of this vast assemblage of life, representing several ethnic groups. Bolivia has three main groups in the Gran Chaco. In the north, the first, the Ayoreode. Some are still nomads and others are settled in, in small communities. The Chiquitanos in the east of the Gran Chaco, they are living in towns. And the third, the Warani, which are in the west and south of the Gran Chaco, hunters and fishermen. These people are very well organized politically. Like this, three main groups in Bolivia, there are several indigenous groups in Latin America, representing almost 10% of the total population. They are constantly, despite their, their richness, their culture richness, they are fighting for their rights, asking for legal territories with enough natural resources to sustain future generations. I have been working alongside indigenous people since 1996. However, my passion for working with people started when I was a child, and my mother was trying to protect me from being partly indigenous because of discrimination. She never imagined how proud of my roots I am. In 2008, I started a um, training program for parabiologists. This program is a participatory biodiversity conservation. This, this program is a model to be spread in the rest of Latin America. Like paramedics, parabiologists 
use their specialized skills to save lives. In this case, their ecosystems, the land that belongs to them. I developed this training course for, for the hunters in order to, co to complement their intrinsic knowledge with a more structured training program, with a more structured learning process. This training course also helped to fulfill the requirements to obtain a technical degree from a local uh, institute recognized by the Bolivian Ministry of Education. The course comprises more than 800 hours. Um, it comprises it, it, over nine months period and comprises 11 different subjects. Biology, basic mathematics, conservation biology, earth ethology, ornithology, first aid, mathematics. I understand that it is very difficult for the hunters who can hardly read and write in Spanish to take this course. However, I believe that the, the training course needs to be challenging for them to take it seriously. One of our oldest students, Akori, 54 years old, he, he was so worried that he would fail the exams that he woke up with the first light in the morning to start studying. He was determined to get his degree because he wanted his family to be proud of him. He made it. Luis Chiqueno, this individual from a minority ethnic group, he was accepted in the course as an observer because he didn't write or read in Spanish. And when, when the first exam arrived, he asked me to allow him to bring the exam to his wife, who is able to read and write in Spanish. And he said, I will, tell, I will ask her to read the questions, the potential answers, and then I will tell her which one to mark. Luis, with a lot of effort and with his wife's help, graduated, passed the exams, and everybody was so proud of him. But what comes next for these people who have who are such an important link to the protection of this valuable ecosystem and who have contributed so much towards a better understanding of the wildlife in this part of the world? So far, 23 parabiolog parabiologists have been trained from two countries, Paraguay and Bolivia. These graduates represent a significant increase in the number of skilled local field investigators able to undertake work in the interest of the conservation of the Gran Chaco region and beyond. Parabiology is a way to invest in the involvement of local people. It's to give the rightful owners the power on the land to take informed decisions about their territory and their future in a changing world. It is more than just giving indigenous people a, a, a short-term job, a task enabling them to make a few dollars a day. It is pride, and where there is pride, there is a will to fight for what one believes on. Today, the parabiology approach can be applied where the social participation and the conservation, uh, the biological conservation agendas meet. Today, parabiologists are fighting for their rights by attending the meetings where important decisions are being made. They are already influencing change by directing development programs with subjects such as soil erosion, overexploitation, and harvesting quotas. They are part rangers collecting data and understanding the meaning of their work. They are empowered. With the right amount of investment in complementary training, we can open opportunities for people to study 
and to contribute to make the most of the human resources we have. It is with pride that members of indigenous communities will be the hands-on stewards of conservation of their own land, the magnificent Grand Chaco, full of ijas, or owners of the forest. Thank you. <laughs>